No, at 23 years old, you have 49,378 eight dollars on your checking account but did that come from your parents in some ways not a cent i just started grinding man you know 16 years old started at taco bell uh went to golden corral uh just been grinding in restaurants really ever since then ladies and gentlemen at uh, 23 years old here noah gm of uh, fast food five guys is coming in at a total assets of a hundred and forty two thousand seven hundred welcome to finance action the show where we take action my name is roman and today i am with noah noah how are you doing pretty good man how are you i'm doing great awesome noah let's look at your profile so you are 23 years old, you originally from Florida and flew all the way from South Carolina. You currently work as a GM for a fast food restaurant, namely Five Guys. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, looking at the way Noah, 23 years old, rated his financial situation from chilling to Mayday, you are the first on our channel. You've rated yourself as chilling and we love to see that. As you will see, Noah has taken really strong steps from a young age to put himself into a very strong financial position and will be discovering how he can still make improvements on his position. But first, I want to dive with you a little bit more about what has been your route to get yourself to be chilling today. Right. Well, uh, 2008 happened, uh, big market crash, and my dad is like the sole provider for my family, and he was, he was struggling pretty hard. Um, we were at risk of losing our house, um, and there was just a lot of uncertainty. Uh, my mom couldn't get work, and I was eight years old. I, I couldn't get a job and help out, uh, so I just felt really, really bad. Um, and I guess that kind of scarred me in a way. I, I kind of resolved to, to save every penny, every dollar I could, so that situation would never happen to my family. I see. Okay. So 2008, yeah, definitely a moment that many have been scarred. And even me, uh, you know, in full transparency, guys, I'm a double citizen, French American. And uh, at the time, my, I was with my parents in France and my father used to work in the US and we got hit very hard as well by 2008. Our situation completely flipped. What brought you at the roots of being financially wise? Right. I, I guess the real root of it was... Uh I spent a lot of time with my grandfather. Uh, he definitely taught me a lot about uh, money and taking care of your needs first and then your wants coming later. And uh, I just started grinding, man. You know, 16 years old, started at Taco Bell, uh, went to Golden Corral, uh, just been grinding in restaurants really ever since then. Okay. So now that we know a little bit more about your story, let's dive together into your assets and your income. So you're a GM of uh, Five Guys. How much does that pays you? Uh, about fifty-five thousand dollars a year, uh, and then there's a bonus structure. Uh, okay, it's about an extra five grand a year. Oh, okay, and that's only sixty thousand dollars for being a GM. Yes. What uh, does that entail? You have to kind of manage employees and so on. Yes, I'll uh, manage shifts, manage employees, uh, manage subordinate managers. Okay, sixty thousand dollars. Do you have any other form of income? Uh, I work with a private chef occasionally. Oh. Um, so. Let's say uh, there's like a rental company he works for. They do vacation rentals. So let's say a family from Nashville or Chicago comes down for a week. Um, they'll throw in a night with their private chef as like a, like a complimentary bonus. And he'll pay me probably $200 for like four hours of work. But to me, that's just fun. I just I like table service and I'm very passionate about uh, the service industry and creating a fantastic guest experience. So that's not really work to me, but uh, it's a nice little side income. Um, so how much would you say that provides you extra per month? Some months I'll work with him maybe one time. Uh, other months I'll work with him three or four or five times. So it's kind of wow. inconsistent. But uh, I'd say on average, maybe about $600 a month. Okay, so Noah, 23 years old, currently GM of a Five Guys. Your total income is $67,200. Looking at how you compare against the median in the United States, 50% make less, 50% make more between 20 and 24 years old, the median is at 36,500. So congratulations, you are far above that almost twice. Well done. I want to quickly piggyback on the, the passion that you mentioned. So private chef, is that the venture that you want to get yourself into? 
Yeah, I think it's definitely, uh, there's something there for sure. I've read uh, stories of private chefs that make over $100,000 a year just cooking in people's homes. Wow. But So cooking is your vibe. That's where you want to evolve Absolutely. in the future. 100%. Okay. Well, then that justifies some of the student debt that we'll be discussing later on. No, at 23 years old, you have 49378 dollars on your checking account. Impressive. Uh, with fairly minimal transactions, as we think about some of the rest of your assets, I also see an investment account with, ladies and gentlemen, over $76,000 on Webull. Uh, most of those positions being pretty much cash. Yep, entirely liquid. Why are you full liquid on this right now? I like to take advantage of opportunities as they occur. Uh, so I, I figure I'd like to stay cash just in case, say, oil crashes tomorrow. You know, I can, and then I can invest a whole bunch. So $76,000, I mean, that's not something that we see every day. Mm -hmm. um, did you actually ended up making money of your positions on those investments? Yes, um, especially when COVID happened. That was a very, very wild year for investing. Uh, I think March of 2020, I turned seven grand into about 30,000. And wow. then the following year, uh, I made another 20,000. And then uh, 2022, I think I made about 18,000. Did you use individual positions? Uh, I would day trade uh, a Ooh. leveraged oil ETF. You day trade? Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. But you were being very cautious about some of yep. your positions? Yeah. I uh, dedicated a lot of time to research and I would just swing trade. I would watch it and, and I knew when to stop. That's the biggest thing, knowing when to stop and take your profit. Have you had days where you plummet and then yes. back up? Yes, I've lost $12,000 in one day before. No way. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I think my best day I made 16, but that, that day where I lost that 12, oof, oh, that was a bad one. Yeah, yeah. so lost 12000 What are the um, emotions when you're losing that much money in one day? How did you manage that? Well, starting out, you make every mistake in the book, and, but you learn from that, and you can't be emotional trading. You have to uh, really look at the numbers and be unemotional with your trading. Uh, it did suck to lose the 12. It, it did really suck. But uh, a couple of weeks later, that specific position went right back up. So had I not sold, I wouldn't have lost any money. Yeah. Oh, so you kept it? Even on day trading, you still kept the position up? Uh, occasionally, yeah. But I, um, I day trade on margin. So oh. yeah, I can't really... Yeah, yeah. Mm. Margin calls are... Nothing. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, very, that very is risky. risky business, very, very my risky. Friend. What yeah. did you stop? Um, well, I started the the five guys thing, and I just figured I have to dedicate one hundred and ten percent to that to become successful, because uh, it is very, very intensive. And from that point, you were like, okay, I'm actually gonna stop my positions. Now yeah. That I mean yeah. Profit. I couldn't dedicate the time required to day trading to to do all the research and and be responsible with it. So I figured just full stop right now for it. Okay. That is, uh, that is interesting. And uh, I mean, as we think about just kind of living cash here on the sideline, $76,000, it's nice to be able to have freedom to take options. But uh, maybe there is other ways that we can better leverage this money. And we'll be discussing about that as uh, we follow up. Uh, you're listing here as an atypical asset, a collection of sneakers as well. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, when I was in high school, I was a bit of a sneakerhead. Uh, I got a bunch of Air Jordans, a um, bunch of foam posits as well. I love foam posits. Uh, I would also uh, kind of rehab sneakers a little bit, so I'd restore them. Like I'd buy, a, say, a beater pair from Goodwill for $40 and, and repair them a little bit and sometimes flip them for like 120 or 130 Yeah, it was nice. It was a nice little hobby. How much money have you made of this? Probably less than a thousand dollars. Oh, okay. yeah. So when I did it in high school, it was just a hobby. hobby. Yeah. But here you're listing assets uh, worth up to fifteen hundred dollars. Yep, I have probably forty pairs of shoes. Forty pairs of shoes. Yeah, and wow. they're all very, very, very nice, pristine. I see. Okay, yep. so you're still collecting on that, yeah, but I, you're I not you're not using your time anymore for this passion. No, right? no, I'm not still collecting or actively collecting. They're just kind of sitting there, and oh, whatever I, I want to look fly. I'll Throw a pair on. There you go. Okay, nice. All right. Uh, looking at some of the rest of your assets, uh, you're listing here as well a car. So what do you drive? A 2019 Ford Fusion. Okay. How many miles? 52,000. SE hybrid? Yep. Wow. Okay. So that gives you a very strong miles per gallon. That's a smart move. Yep. I get almost 50 miles to the gallon. It's, it's Ooh, very, very nice. Okay. Yeah. 50 miles. So I'm not seeing any depth here on this, meaning that you own it full rights? Yep. I own the car. 
I see here the value on Kelly Blue Book currently listed at 17200 How did you buy that car? The gentleman that owned the, or ran the dealership was my, my grandpa's neighbor. Right. So he gave me like a 0% interest loan. Okay, guys, here, as you can see, a perfect example of um, a smart car buying positions. Not only did you buy a hybrid, which is you great miles per gallon. On top of that, you are not uh, flaming around, kind of trading your car as I was when I was your age, my <laughs> friend. Holy smokes. I had, I think I've had over 10 cars over the past 10 years. Wow. Uh, insane. Yeah, definitely car guy here, guys. Uh, but today I'm running into a Mitsubishi Mirage just because <laughs> I want to allocate my money differently. Um, do you have any other assets like retirement funds? Nope. Oh. No, no 401k, uh, no retirement funds. Uh, just the cash in my checking and, and Weeble. Ladies and gentlemen, at uh, 23 years old here, Noah, GM of uh, fast food, five guys, is coming in at a total assets of uh, 142,700, which is impressive. But did that come from your parents in some ways? Not a cent. Not a cent? Starting at 16 years old? Yep. Building very strong financial ethic. Uh, but, uh, you know, some of those components can definitely be improved and uh, we'll be discussing on that. But overall, right now, I am particularly impressed about your situation. Thank you. Well done. Let's uh, transition then together, my friend, here into your next segment, your expenses and your debt. Starting first with rent. How much do you pay for rent? Zero. Oh. <laughs> Zero. Okay. Yes, What's I, going on? Living I still live with my parents. Still living with parents? Okay. Yep. Um, are they in a good financial position? Yes. Yeah, they're doing pretty well. Uh, is he familiar with your finance situation? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's something that you guys speak pretty... Oh, yeah. Me and my dad are, are very, very open. We, we talk about like stock picks and stuff. Oh, yeah. I see. What, what do you do for a living? Uh, my dad is a stock trader. Oh. Okay, that's the root of uh, yep. what you've been, uh, what you've been in that environment. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, definitely taught you some good uh, options. Have you actually at the time like traded any crypto or NFT or any of that? I'm, uh, I don't believe in NFTs. Uh, I've done a couple of trades with like Bitcoin or Dogecoin when it was hot. Uh, Shiba Inu too, but oh uh, my god, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The but, big uh, ones. I feel like that stuff's all fake, man. So it's all baloney. Uh, yeah. I mean, it really depends. Personally, like, I think there is a future for those type of currencies, to be honest. Um, maybe not in the form that we are expecting it today. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like even branching a little bit out here, looking at, like, the NFTs. This is going to be a, a pinch controversial, but the way they currently exist, to me, provide fairly limited value, right? Yep. For the most part, you're buying into a community. It's uh, up and down. I've been into the NFT game a little bit here and there. You know, I've actually made money of NFTs. Oh, wow. Uh, not as much because at some point, they took big risks and they didn't mm -hmm. pay up. Um, but where do I personally see, for example, the future of NFTs is, um, let's say, in real estate plays. And what I mean by that is in the United States, or even in like France, you know, when you buy a house, there is a title that is being provided to you that is kind of nationally recorded. Right. However, in certain countries, namely developing countries, sometimes proof of ownership is difficult to show. Mm -hmm. And so having some type of a digital asset that is being recognized by the state can allow us to justify in front of the government ownership of such properties. So I know of uh, some projects that are actually involved with something like this, um, oh, wow. where uh, this could have some potential, you know, kind of leveraging existing technologies. However, the current JPEG or the pictures that, uh, you know, are made uh, just to join Discord groups and flame to get into white, uh, yeah. into white list that doesn't yeah. work, it's BS. And so I don't please encourage you guys to get into that game. I've suffered a bit, but overall I haven't, you know, lost money. So I'm glad that you're not putting too much money into this uh, right now, actually. Zero. Okay. So you're paying zero on your rent. Uh, are you contributing to like utilities or anything? Um, no, uh, but I will like do chores here and there. Uh, I'll cook for my family a lot. Uh, but that's about it. Yeah, so maybe just grocery expenses is the biggest expense out of that. With your financial situation, why wouldn't you try and help, like even paying a little bit of rent here or le left or right just to showcase your 
uh, willingness to help over the overall family. Right. I've tried. Uh, I've actually tried several times. Uh, my grandpa kind of prodded me to, to try and help with rent, but uh, my dad said, don't worry about it. You know? okay. And he keeps kind of dismissing, like, don't worry about it. I think it's a pride thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that's a very good point. Yeah. Okay, that is fair. All right. Uh, well, I mean, to no surprise, guys, that brings your housing expense to 0% of your income. Now, you know what is the number because you've been following the show. Actually, Noah here is one of our greatest fans following on all of the videos so far. What is the golden number that you should target for housing? 28 or lower, right? So 28%. Yes, Noah, you got it right. So as you think about potentially moving out... Your total housing expense should be less than a thousand one hundred per month. Okay, but uh, that is something that you should keep in mind as we think about your future housing expenses. Okay, right. all right. So moving on to your transportation expenses, Noah. Here, I mean, you have a zero dollar car payment. You're probably paying on insurance. What? How much are you paying on insurance? One hundred and ten. Okay. How much on gas per month? Maybe $80. Okay, yeah, that's right. 50 miles per gallon. Let's go. Okay, so you have to be below 15%. Green light, awesome. As we know, Noah is doing pretty strong on that. Okay. Looking at some of the rest of your expenses here, you are probably one of the most frugal person that uh, I have seen as uh, your statement are currently highlighting three expenses. Gas, insurance, and groceries. Is there anything else that you're spending your money on? I smoke some pot. Ah, yeah, all yeah. right. That's, okay. That's Let's probably my this. biggest vice. Okay. Yeah. How much do you spend a month on that? All those ATM withdrawals. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So how much would you say it's the sum of this? 180 a month. Ooh, yeah. you're definitely smoking, my friend, huh? Okay, looking at some of the rest of your expenses here outside of, uh, you know, the ones that we have seen here, you're not showing anything on your statement as you only have three lines. Uh, you don't even pay for phone, do you? No. Okay, do you have pets? Uh, yes, but uh, no expenses associated with them. Okay, not even entertainment? You never go to the restaurant? No. No? Well, I've, I've been to a few here on my trip here. Yeah. I see, yeah. yeah. Flying from South Carolina, that's insane. But <laughs> uh, do you have any other expenses here that are not being recorded outside of what I'm seeing on your statements? Uh, no, pretty much all my expenses are there. No financial obligations? Nope, no kids, no I nothing. mean, guys, uh, literally has three lines. The most frugal person we've seen on this show so far. It's <laughs> insane. <laughs> I'm not even seeing any DoorDash or coffee. Oh, wow, guys, is this a renewal? I can't <laughs> believe it. Well, I cook at home. Uh, yeah, that's nice. I mean, it's your passion. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But uh, just overly impressed uh, about uh, the rate of your expenses here. I mean, uh, you're making 3900 net per month. So how much are you saving every month right now? Probably 3400 3500 of that goes wow. in savings. And that's exactly what I'm seeing here is uh, I uh, reviewed some of your expenses. Uh, so you're saving, what, 85% uh, of your income exceptional you you don't feel the incentive to like spend money on coffee or dining out uh, what not make you interested in any of those expenses right well i feel like um some people would do that when they get like a better position like you ever heard of lifestyle inflation i'm sure you have yes of yeah, course that's a very real thing for a lot of people but uh try really hard to not let that affect me and just going back to to what my grandpa said you know take care of your needs first uh, then your wants can come later. All these little expenses here, here and there, here and there adds up and all of a sudden you're in the hole like 10 grand, 20 grand. For the very vast majority of the population, wealth is going to be accumulated through little tasks, like the little coffee here and there that at the end of, if you were to invest that money, it's going to cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars, even you realizing this, which is pretty insane. And I see that you're not going forward with those behavior. I mean, however, at some point, I imagine that you're going to probably have a partner that uh, maybe you're going to have in... Uh, I liked your video about the, the pizza, the, the million-dollar pizza. Or oh, that yeah, so that's yeah right. that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, so so we have actually a video about the the pizza. That's, it's the $250,000 pizza yep. uh, that speaks about that behavior of just you eating pizza once a month instead of once a week will sum at the end to $250,000 on your account saved if this money is invested. Man. Looking outside of your expenses here, you're recording some student loans, but balances that are pretty nice. 3500 at 4.5%. 
another one student loan 2000 at also 4.5%. So you are pursuing education degrees right now? Yes, I'm still in college. What are you studying? I'm working towards a bachelor's in psychology, about halfway done with that. And I'm one semester off of finishing my associate in baking and pastry. Okay. Um, did you had to accumulate student debt to go through that, or did you work to pay that off? Um, the psychology, yeah. I took uh, Pell Grants, and I had some, uh, some scholarship help as well. Uh, and then the culinary school was actually free. Um, I worked at a fine dining restaurant for a while, and the chef really inspired me to go there. And the owner of the restaurant actually paid for my education there at the culinary school because... She was very, very well off and, and just really, really believed in me. And I'm very grateful for that. I see. That's awesome. So you're carrying about $5,500 worth of debt. Okay. At 23 years old, Noah, you're coming here with a very strong financial position as we think about your net worth. Today, your net worth, looking at all of the assets that we've mentioned, your checking accounts, your investment accounts, your car equity, against some of the student loans that you have, you're showcasing at 23 years old, 137,200. My friend, congratulations with money that you've pretty much built on your own at such a young age, having yes, very good uh, behaviors around your finances. Okay, and now that we know exactly your financial situation, let's look together into the money case. And actually, as I'm bringing here the case, guys, we would love for your support. If you like this type of content and we bring a variety of guests from really struggling to Noah that's uh, shining here in uh, the financial environment, we would invite you to please like, subscribe and write that you've subscribed in the comment. This way I can thank you personally. Now let's get back to our money case. Like and subscribe, man. This guy is so nice, so respectful. Welcome me into his home. <laughs> All right. So Noah, here I want to bring to your attention the component around the way you've invested or you're just leaving your money sitting around. You know, with $142,000 worth of assets, but if I exclude the car, around 126 cash, you are pretty much leaving your money staying on your checking accounts and on your brokerage account. However, as you know, the cost of living in the United States is constantly increasing. And yeah, as is inflation. Inflation yeah. is hitting you. And yeah. right now, you're doing nothing to help you fight inflation. Yeah. I want to showcase to you the amount of money that your current position are making you lose because of inflation every month. No, every month, the value of your money Non-invested loses not $100, not $200, not $300, not $400. Oh, no. Not $500. Oh, man. Not $600, dude. Oof. Every month, you're losing $630. This Jeez. isn't interest that you're paying to the bank. It is just... The concept of inflation hurting you by leaving your money sitting, not doing anything with it. Right. Now, it is fair to save money on the side for open positions when they come and they arise. I agree with you. However, there are steps that you can take to no longer lose 600 bucks per month. Right. Now, generally, I would ask you to throw that money away. However, it's not really the case. <laughs> Well, I understand very much the, the point you're trying to make. Lazy money doesn't make money, right? Lazy money just makes you lose money, right? Right. All right, so $600, it's pretty insane. I mean, as I sum here, this is about 7500 this year, wow. which is pretty thick, right? That's when your salary is 3900 what does that bring you? That brings you to about 16.5% of your income that's uh, being thrown to inflation. Well, wow. pretty hectic, right? Very significant, yeah. So let's see how then from that point we can look into managing your assets in an engineering way. So looking briefly after this money case segment at splitting your situation in three components, as you know, your needs, your wants, and the goal category. Your needs right now calculating based on what I'm seeing, you're at 477, which is 12% of your income. 
We like it to be below 50. Jackpot to you. Your wants, I am allowing you $200 just because it's the $180 worth of pot. And then on the side here, you just have nothing. It's insane to be that frugal. So about 5%, which leaves your gold category or your savings, in this case, for potential investment at 85% of your income. Well done. As I think about the recommendation for your situation, I want to understand a little bit your goals. So can you walk me briefly through what are you trying to accomplish? Uh, well, homeownership. That's a big one. Okay, that's awesome. Well, I'd like to build a really just a, a, a net. Yeah. Yeah, just one of those for my family so that we never have to go through any struggles or, or any tribulations. Um, and I'd like my kids to have college funds. Uh, okay. I'd just like to live a nice, secure, comfortable life. Okay. So you have a credit score of a 760 here, and uh, thank you again for providing us with some of your credit card statement. I see very little balance, about six, five dollars, four dollars, which is nice. You're showcasing the ability to take on multiple types of debts. I like that. Uh, but you have for objective, I believe, to increase your credit score as well, right? Yes. And uh, what I want to ask you here, you have $5,500 worth of student loans. Are you thinking about paying them down pretty fast? Ideally, I like to pay them off just all lump sum. I see. Uh, so just uh, here as a side note, I would personally not pay them. Why? What I mean by that is I would continue minimum payments on those. Mm -hmm. What that does, as you think about your credit score, is your ability to continuing maintaining monthly payments. Right. You want to record payments on debt. Your credit cards are giving you monthly payments. It's nice to see, yes. But uh, showcasing the ability that you are managing active debt, even if it's a low amount, is beneficial. So given the interest of 4.5%, I would personally not really touch them. They are not costing you a dime of interest and they are showcasing positive payments on your credit score. So maintain them and just run them to their term. It's going to give you uh, account length and, as I mentioned, monthly payment as well. Right. Okay, so no, no, I think about it. I think those are some of my oldest credit accounts as well. So, so if I just paid them off, they'd probably knock down my score. It would... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, very generous because uh, account age is one of the components around yeah. it. That's, okay. that's one of my biggest issues when I check my credit score. I think my oldest account is only like three years. Oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and I see also very nicely here the type of credit cards that you've taken are with big institutions. Uh, very nice to see um, because... I would never recommend anyone to take departmental credit cards. It's just going to be a waste of time, a waste of an account, and overall, do not allow you the opportunity to upgrade. Right. When you first start, uh, I believe your credit card was a Discover card, right? Yep. And you probably used kind of like a, a prepaid one, I'm sorry, a secured one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you have the opportunity to upgrade your card little by little to the point where you're maintaining the account age and you're benefiting from very good rewards. Okay. Yeah. I've increased the credit limit on that one, uh, I think, about four times now. Wow. It started, it was, uh, I think, a $500 limit. Yeah. And now it's uh, 3500 What do you do to increase it? I uh, just applied for the increase. That's uh, awesome. I yes. Think, yeah, I think the biggest thing to look at for that is uh, like debt-to-income ratio. So yeah. my income just kept increasing, so... That's yeah. awesome. Yes, I love to see that. That's great. Um, as a friendly reminder, as you want to play the credit score game, it is good to inquire with the bank personally. I call them every six months. Mm -hmm. And I say, hey, you know, my income has increased by X or Y. I would like to increase my credit limit without having a hard pull on my credit card. Right. How can I do that? You know, that's how uh, you play the game here because uh, increasing your credit limit will decrease your debt ratio. Yep. Um, um, so that is good to see. Okay. Another component here that you mentioned is you want to continue building a nasty egg. So my recommendation number one was to maintain that debt component and potentially try and see if you can diversify taking on, um, I mean, uh, refinance your car. Mm, maybe not right now with the current debts, but maybe you could potentially think about refinancing a portion of your car uh, um, just so that you can showcase payments. This right. is going to allow you to continue building. You want to have debt that is not costing you too much to showcase that behavior. Number two, I would like to for you to start thinking about retirement funds. 
as you know, golden age in your 20s, and right now you have zero into retirement funds. What you can do is so easy. You can start putting up to 6,500 into a Roth IRA because your income is, you know, is, is strong, but it's not taxing you too much. Mm. You can benefit from very good tax advantage by putting and maxing out your Roth IRA every year. Right. Number three, I want you, as we discussed, to start fighting inflation and putting some of those funds right now, as I mentioned, one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar cash. Put about, eh, put about thirty thousand dollars. That's going to be a, your emergency fund into a high yield saving account. It's going to give you five around five five point five percent per year. It's free money, literally free money, and it allows you to fight inflation. Point number four, as you mentioned previously, potentially owning a house. Okay, so that's kind of where the situation is a little bit blurry. You have to be very mindful here because sometimes owning a house financially does not give you the best reward. And let yep. me tell you a strategy that personally I employ, which is called the 5% rule. Okay, 5% rule is simple. What it does is um, it accounts for multiple components around homeownership, such as property tax, maintenance, as well as cost of equity, because you have to put money down, okay, and you're making monthly payments uh, instead of potentially investing the difference. How do I calculate the 5% monthly rule? So looking at the real estate market in South Carolina for about a decent house, it's around $400,000 where you live, right? Yeah. So how would I approach this? I would take that $400,000, multiply by 5%, and divide it by 12, okay? That gives you a result of 1,650 or so, okay? So if you are able to rent for an amount that is lower than that, generally, as a renter, you would benefit from it. Now you're going to tell me, yeah, Roman, what about appreciation and so on? Yes, and that really depends. It is case specific. If you're buying a house, let's say, you know, right now in um, Las Vegas, for example, your returns are going to be peanuts. You rather, yeah. you know, <laughs> use that money into renting. But if you're investing into, you know, more uh, landlord friendly states, you know, like uh, Wisconsin, Tennessee, or potentially South Carolina, I'm not too familiar, there is a chance that house appreciation will outweigh some of the downfall with doing house ownership. So this is something for you to consider as you think about that. Another thing that's very popular nowadays is called house hacking. Are you familiar with that? A little bit. That's where you uh, kind of rent out specific rooms in a house. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So you don't like roommates. However, you could potentially think about either buying into a multifamily, so like a duplex. Yeah, like a duplex, yeah. Exactly. So that this way you are helping your mortgage by renting a portion of your house. And this allows you to build equity on that house. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, you're close to the operations. If something arises, you, you know, you can manage what's going on there. Generally, I really like house hacking. Personally, it's one of my favorite things. If you can afford it, given your financial position and potentially you want to stay in South Carolina for a little bit, right? This is good is something that I would heavily consider. House hacking, you put a 20% down payment or you can sometimes benefit from first house buyer where you put about 3%. However, the rates today are very high, my friend. It's about making that good deal. You know, if I were you, no financial advice, I would potentially look into maybe a, a multifamily that you can... Uh, yeah, multifamily home that you get a very good deal, that you can invest because you are on the spot there. You can invest into maybe renovating it, mm, rehabbing, elev it. rehabbing, elevating the value of it. And it's kind of uh, this guy's flip that you're doing on yourself. It's actually kind of funny you talk about house hacking. I was, I was talking uh, about house hacking with my Uber driver here. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, I think his uncle or something owned uh, a large house and, and rented it out to several people. Yeah, yeah he's telling uh, me it's pretty lucrative. Oh, yeah, it's super yeah. lucrative. Uh, point number five, diversification. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is you have money invested into brokerage account. Right now, you're waiting for good plays. Your father is a stock trader. You've had experience daily trading. It is very risky. I've seen people reading yeah, themselves on this. Yeah. So I don't know if uh, looking at the way you want a trajectory 
uh, your life, working more into the entertainment and uh, kind of restaurant business, how much time are you going to put to that? Personally, I would use a fairly straightforward strategy, which is investing safely into index funds like the S&P index 500. Mutual funds. Exactly. Yep. They give you about 10% a year. You don't have to watch it. You open it. You're still benefiting from the overall market. And did you know actually that there are statistics that have said that timing the market generally tend to be of a lower outcome mm -hmm. than just investing in progressively. Yeah, time in the market beats timing the market. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so I would uh, potentially invest some of your funds into safe positions. And also think about alternative investments, let's say like real estate plays outside of the house hacking that we've mentioned. Like potentially, you know, some of the success that I found myself was in um, being a hard money lender. Mm -hmm. And what does that consist of is you're providing money for a short period of time. In your case, it can be, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars and sometimes more uh, into an investment. Generally, it's a flip or a property that you know they are trying to bring back together uh, to the market, and you're contributing toward that purchase. Generally, it's on a deal that is at undervalue, so you're protected by the equity, and you can get up to 15% of your investment. So that is very easy to make, uh, generally, fairly safe money. You are willing to invest those funds for a short period of time, and uh, if you have the right contacts, you can make some good... Uh, you know, good use of the funds that are currently being uh, hurt by inflation. Mm -hmm. Point number six, and probably your favorite one. That's my last one. I want you to think about how can you elevate yourself in your profession. You are passionate in about the cooking industry. You're passionate about fine dining. With much respect, there are many options in the United States to elevate your game on that front. However, international experience, and you know, I am proof of that in a way because I have had the chance to open myself to different cultures throughout my life. I even lived in Thailand and uh, in you know worked in Europe, in Asia, now in the U.S. Um, with the funds that you have at 23 years old, with no real attach in the United States of commitment, you could consider going into places that are renowned for for uh, some of their cooking and acquire different sets of skills that are then going to be valued back when you come back to the US. You know, I'm a French person and, uh, you know, with no discrimination, um, you could very well go to Paris for six months or a year at, uh, let's say, the Cordon Bleu, which gives you an added certification that many cannot get into because maybe they haven't put themselves into financial strengths that you are. Mm -hmm. And then benefit from that experience travel around, come back, and then build something here that will bring you a competitive advantage on the play. Actually, this one is my favorite one, if I were you, because there is nothing today that, that makes you stick here. You don't have any financial obligations. You don't have any um, you know, family obligation, it appears. Take a shot. Go outside of the boundaries of the circle that you've put yourself in. Mm -hmm. Explore those different culture. Come back with a crazy value that are then going to uh, allow you for a very strong competitive advantage on that market. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really wonderful. Um, definitely like to travel. I mean, th even this trip here was was fantastic. I've had a really good time so far. Really like in Seattle. Um, I'd really love to go and and work at like a, like a really like gastronomic, like powerhouse kind of restaurant. That'd be fantastic. Like Le Gavroche or, or La Tante Claire. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. So overall, you know, as we thought about your recommendation here, out of over the past decades, more than 100 people that have had the chance to um, do audits with, you are comparatively to your income and your age, uh, probably the one that has had the best financial situation that I've seen in a while. And I'm very impressed. Uh, I feel that you have it together. 
I'm hoping that some of the recommendations that I've provided you're going to take action on, okay, especially as we think about fighting that inflation that's hurting right. you every month or every year. Uh, but other than that, my friend, I have to say um, this has been an excellent experience. And also for you at home, as you think about your own financial position uh, and your own finances, yeah, here, our friend here is coming in very strong with great finances, but at your level and you could be millionaire or you can be you know struggling implement some of those components into your lifestyle and i promise you that you will see an improvement as we wrap up our discussion do you have any final words prepare for the future always keep that in mind because that rainy day you don't know when it's going to come could be tomorrow could be next week but uh be prepared my friend, I will be following up with you uh, in about a month to make sure that you've invested some of that money into the high yield saving account, but we should be fairly uh, easy for you. Uh, other than that, it's been a pleasure interacting with you. We hope at home that uh, this experience also brings you light into an interesting financial situation. As always, we please invite you to help support this channel uh, by subscribing and liking or even commenting on our platform. Until then, we'll see you next time. A bientôt.